Hello everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. In today's video, we are talking about brand new software on one resize AI 2022. Really, really cool software for resizing your photos. You can downsize, upsize, whatever you need to do. If you need to resize your photo, which if you are a photographer, at some point you need to resize a photo, whether it's for print, social media, uh, whatever it may be, you want to resize your photos. And so this program is designed to help you resize your photos. It's really quick and easy. And the software is super, super snappy. I really, really like it. I'm going to be reviewing it in today's video. It just got released this morning if you're watching this video as it comes out. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. I would highly recommend picking it up. I've included a link down below where you can pick it up as well as a discount code. So in a non-AI based resizing software, essentially what it does, let's say you want to upsize a photo and you want to four times the size of it. So you want to increase the size quadrupled. Uh, what it does is it just essentially copies the pixels in one area and creates them in that same area and just enlarges the photo that way. Now this can create some pretty poor effects and it's not the best way to upsize your photos. So what On One Resize AI does is the software is smart enough to be able to create pixels that aren't necessarily uh, just a copy of the ones in that area. It's going to create new pixels that are actually going to upsize your photo to give you more megapixels, more resolution, more size, allow you to print a little bit larger. It works really great. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I am using a pre-release version of the software. So if you do download the software today, it may look just ever so slightly different. But for the most part, this is exactly what you're going to be looking at and exactly how it works. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so upon opening on one resize AI 2022, your screen is going to look like this. What you want to do is hit open photos and navigate to the photo you would like to use. I'm going to use this one here and I am going to hit open. Now, the first thing that you probably want to do here is choose your photo size, which can be done over here. But I want to walk through the, some of the things that will appear on the left side of the screen when you load this program up. Now, first of all, you've got options to crop, which I usually wouldn't do here. I would do this in whatever I'm editing this uh, photo in beforehand, whether it be on one, whether it be Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever it is, I would usually crop there first and then go here for my final step, my final resize, that final sharpen um, for whatever use that I want to use it for. Now on this left side of the screen, we've got options for lots of different presets. These presets are nice to have if you're doing a lot of exporting, but if you're working with just one photo at a time, I don't recommend using the presets over here. So I'm just going to close that sidecar down over here. And now we can go over here to our photo size. So cool thing about photo size is you've got a lot of options. First of all, um, you can resize to a certain dimensions, a long edge, a short edge, width, height, megapixels, or a percentage. Now, a lot of these may come in use. For example, long edge is really nice if you've got someone who says, I need a uh, 2000 pixel wide photo um, sent to me. And you can just go long edge and just select um, 2000 pixels. You can change the uh, units of measurements here. I've got it on inches, but you could change it to pixels if you wanted. Now, one thing that I really like doing is using dimensions. So let's say that I'm going to upsize this photo for print because most of the time, if I'm upsizing a photo, it's going to be for print. Uh, and of course, you can use this software to downsize your photos, but I want to show an example of upsizing because that's where the software is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to upsize this to 20 by 30. Now, if I hit 30 on the width, um, this will automatically scale. It's 19.9. It's essentially 20. Uh, I must have just slightly cropped this before I loaded it in. And so the upsize is going to be working. Now, you'll see if we come up here, the zoom is at 31%. And if I change the width and height, the zoom will change as well. But the photo will still stay on my screen because I have it on fit. Now, if I click 100, it's going to zoom in to the size that the photo actually is. Now, this is really cool. So if my screen was 19.9 by 30, this, uh, when I click 100, would fill up the screen perfectly. But since my screen is a little bit smaller, it's just showing me a portion. This is perfect for editing photos where you want to resize it um, and make it larger because this allows us to actually look at the photo in the size that it's going to be printed. So you can sit back from your computer screen a few feet, uh, look at it like you're looking at the print on your wall. Uh, you're not going to be looking at the print on your wall from six inches away. You're probably going to be looking at it from 10 feet away, 20 feet away, whatever it is, depending on the space you're using, obviously. Now we're going to go down and we're going to go to sharpening. This is where all the cool stuff happens. We can click sharpening and we want to sharpen this for print. I like using the presets over here. Of course, you could use screen. You could use it to fix the focus. And there's a ton of other different options here you can use. But for the most part, you're probably going to use screen and print when you're resizing. 
Now, the first thing you want to adjust is the threshold, and the threshold affects essentially how much of your photo is going to be sharpened. When it's at zero, your whole photo is being sharpened. As you increase it, it's going to not sharpen some of those smoother areas. Let's just go for 10 on this photo. We can go ahead and increase the detail. I usually like to have the detail all the way up, and then I bring the amount down. And there's no exact number uh, that's perfect for this. You just want to bring it to a spot where it feels right. And I don't want to over sharpen it. That looks pretty good to me. You can also protect the shadows and the highlights. So I like doing that if I've got some deep shadows that I don't want to be sharpened. So for example, we'll bring this up a little bit just to protect some of those shadows. And we'll bring this up a little bit to protect some of the highlights in the waterfall. This just prevents the darkest or the lightest spots in your image from getting sharpened. You can also do it to protect skin if you are printing out uh, or exporting photos that are portraits, people in them, whatever. Um, now, you can go up to settings, and the last thing that I like to adjust is the smoothness. So essentially what this does is it adjusts the smoothness of the AI sample of the pixels that it's recreating. Now you can slide that over. You can see it makes the image more smooth. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's simply just slide it until you find the spot that looks good to you. Now on a YouTube video in 1080p, this probably doesn't look like it's doing a whole heck of a lot because uh, we're doing some pretty fine tuned stuff. My photo's already in focus, uh, but it is really helping. This is something that I'm gonna do before every single print. Um, so this is looking really good. Now you have some options for a few more things that I'm not gonna use as a landscape photographer, but you may wanna use depending on what kind of photography you're doing. First thing is film grain. You can select this here to add a little bit of grain to your image. And this is just a way to make your photos look like they're film. Not something I'm gonna use, but it is a cool feature to have if you are a photographer that likes using things like that. So next you have the option to do some tiling. You've got a few options inside there. That's not something that I really ever use. And then lastly, we can do gallery wrap. Gallery wrap works if you are, let's say, printing a canvas photo and you want it to wrap on the edges, you can do that here. However, if you are printing at a print shop, most of the time they are automatically gonna do that gallery wrap for you. You don't need to include it on your file. But if you print your own canvas photos, uh, that is an option for you. So you can see how easy it is to get this done. It's really snappy, really easy to adjust the photo size. Like I said, I could downsize this as well, change this to pixels, whatever you wanna do. Once you're done, you can go down here and hit export, and then you've got some options to export. Now, you would just want to send this out. You wouldn't want to resize it because you've already resized it up here, um, but you can go ahead and hit export once you've filled in some of the settings here, and that is that. Uh, that is exactly how you use On One Resize AI 2022. Really, really nice software. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. That is how to use On One Resize AI 2022. Hopefully this video is enough to get you started in the program, get you to start resizing those photos. I really think it's a useful program for resizing photos for web, for print, um, for whatever you need them for. It's just a really nice software to have, and it's really, really quick and easy to use. It is much easier to resize and sharpen your photos in this software than something like Photoshop or in Lightroom. You're gonna get much, much better results, especially when you're upsizing. Now, pretty much any photographer at some point in their career is going to want to upsize or downsize their photos. So I do recommend picking this one up. I've included the link where you can pick this one up down below, as well as a little discount code that you guys can use to save some money on the software. If you guys have any questions about the software, please feel free to let me know. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this video. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.